Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to the session. Um, I've been at Versa for about a year, and it's been a great journey. Uh, it's wonderful to uh, be here finally, uh, speaking with one of our marquee enterprise customers. Um, and Jason Upfalter from Capital One uh, will be uh, sharing with, uh, with us uh, his views. We're going to do a fireside chat. We're not going to make it formal. Uh, and we're going to be available afterwards as well to answer any questions. So um, uh, Jason, maybe you can introduce yourself and a little bit about the bank. Sure. So my name is Jason Abfalter. I'm technology director for uh, retail and direct banking at Capital One. Um, my teams are responsible mainly for the support, uh, engineering, architecture, and project delivery across our retail uh, branch and cafe footprint. So if, if you're not familiar with Capital One, it's one of the large, uh, 10 largest banks in the United States um, based on deposits. We service approximately 45 million uh, customer accounts, and those customers can access their, their accounts online anytime or anywhere, or they could go into one of our 700 plus branches or cafes. So now, Jason, um, you know, my family always asks me, what's in your wallet, Dad, right? So, but um, uh, honestly, I think the audience really needs to know what's in your branch. Uh, and I know this uh, construct of UCPE and uh, all these other things that are out there, you know, we talk about software-defined branch. So let me just take a minute about software-defined branch. Um, our view is, is that all the functions that need to sit at that WAN edge or at that branch should be done in software. Now, um, there are certainly different approaches. You can take best-of-breed approaches of VNFs and deploy them, as uh, this session earlier talked about. Or you can combine functions. Um, and what we do is we actually do a multi-function single VNF in which you can get networking, routing, SD-WAN, security, all different kinds of security, all combined into one to simplify and lower the cost of the deployment and the, and the approach that we do there. So that's our software-defined branch approach. We can also accommodate third-party VNFs. You want to have something else there? Of course you can do that. That's not a problem. But um, maybe you can talk a little bit about um, you know, the bank and the digital transformation that you've been on sure. and why this came about. Sure. So sticking with the theme for all the other sessions, we really are on a digital transformation. I think banking in general, uh, especially in the branches, are on, is in a digital transformation uh, time. Uh, no longer do people want to go and stand in line to cash a check or deposit money into your checking account. That's all self-service items on, on your mobile device. Now really branches are becoming more of a, a, a financial hub where people go in with their bring your own mobile device or your own banking device in and they're, they're going in to understand how best to use these devices, how to set up their bill pay. So now you have people coming in with their smartphones and doing their banking inside of these branches. Uh, you also have tellers that are no longer behind the line or behind the, the, the glass and the big counters and they're coming out with, with uh, tablets and they're sitting down and understanding your financial needs and actually opening, helping you open accounts right on the tablet. So it's no longer just stand in line. What that means for us is uh, the, the guest Wi-Fi that we have in our branches, when, when we first started out, was really around um, coming in and browsing your social, social network, your social media sites, while you waited for your number to be called to go up to, uh, to the teller and talk to them. That's really not the case anymore. Now where we're at is if our Wi-Fi, our, our production, our guest Wi-Fi is down, Customers can no longer bank with us. We can no longer open accounts. We need to make sure that that, that that's network is always up and always available and also secure. We need to really make sure it's secure because people are trusting that they come in and we're going to have those three options for them. So this digital transformation has really affected your networking needs inside the branch, but also across the branches, but also the security needs, as you said, have evolved. Yes. Uh, that's kind of interesting. So um, th that's, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's quite impressive that you've done that. Now, you went down the path of SD-WAN a while back, and we've been working together for, God, 18 months or yep, so yep. as companies, even before I got there. So that's great. <laughs> um, but now, what was the maybe thought process or approach? What were the problems you were trying to solve? Maybe you can sure. give them. Sure. So, so I can go over. Before we even went out and looked at any of the vendors out there, we met with our business and we, always, we wanted to partner with the business and say, what, what are we really trying to solve um, when we, we embark on this journey? And uh, um, one of the main things that came up was we need to reduce our dependency on carriers. We need to decrease the three to six months that it takes to bring in fiber into our branches or new cafes we're building. 
Um, too many times we'd be building a, a new cafe and we'd be delayed on opening or we'd, we'd be scrambling trying to figure out how we're going to get it open with reliable, uh, reliable internet in them. Uh, my, the, my business partner in the cafe said, if I don't have internet, I'm just an expensive coffee shop, right? <laughs> so <laughs> without internet, people can't come in and, and bank or, or, or have those financial conversations with us. Um, and then the other piece is, is in our branches, we have a lot of legacy. So we're running a lot of T1s, 1.5 meg. Uh, it just isn't enough. As we go through our digital transformation in banking, what we're finding is the, it's not just the network. We're also pushing out all this new technology, all these great things. Our developers are doing wonderful uh, you know, de deployments out to our branches and, and what we're onto, these, onto our tablets and our branch uh, networks aren't able to handle that, that, that new technology. So what we found is we, we could uh, combine our investment. We already have broadband for our guest Wi-Fi in all of our branches. We already have an MPLS. Let's combine that, that, that investment together to give us a broadband lift right away. So we saw um, a, a big lift when we went, or we wanted to get a big lift by in, uh, combining those two investments together. Uh, the other thing is, is uh, replace our current backup. It was cellular 3G. Uh, we had to fail our, when a branch, our MPLS had problems, it would fail over to 3G. We could barely run our applications. We'd have to fail our, our phone systems over to our call centers. Wasn't a good experience um, at all. When you're talking, the other thing is, is full automation. When you have 700 branches out there, we just weren't keeping up. Um, the manual process to keep our infrastructure up and running just didn't keep up with the, the development efforts that were happening. So we wanted full automation. The other thing the business was asking for is, I'm paying for all this bandwidth. Who's using it? What are they doing with it? We just didn't have a good visibility into all our branches of what was, what was being used and consumed. And so we needed more analytics. We need to know what's happening in our branches, how people are using um, our infrastructure. And then just something that we didn't have to sit and fail over manually. If there's, there was times that we'd actually have to fail over to 3G. We need that to be automated. We need people it to be seamless. Um, and then a really important one was around segregating traffic. So as, as you move forward, you have ATMs. You have, now you have guests on there. You have private uh, corporate traffic. We need to be able to segregate that traffic and understand those traffic patterns so we know where we're sending them to. Are we dumping them out to the internet? Are they going back to our data center? Are they secure? Are they able to jump between them? We need to make sure that that was secure. Um, so and that's really important. Segregation is about yeah. separating all these traffic types uh, and users uh, even at the branch. Even at the branch, yes, because you have ATMs, you have all these different people that are now using our yep. network. Got it. And then, of course, the business is always, you know, I, if you look, I threw the last one in there. They want it resilient. They want it dependable. They want it available. Um, they want it redundant. All the, the keywords that they like to throw out there is really what they were looking for. No, that's great. Now, um, you know, your team did a lot of work early on um, leveraging all of these kind of business and technology objectives and came up with criteria. Um, and there was a whole lot of things in that criteria. If you go to the next slide, yeah. uh, I think we'll see that. Now, maybe you can talk a little bit about the context around some of these uh, and why these were important. Yeah, yeah um, so, so I put this slide together, and I'm not going to go through each one, but this is really where the building blocks for what we were, what we were going for. Um, so based on that information from the business, we put together some weighted criteria, and we built some questions around this. And as we went out and talked to the different vendors, um, we were able to weigh uh, what we were looking for. On this slide, there's a few things I do want to touch on. It had to be cloud ready. Um, we're moving into AWS. It needed to be able to be cloud ready where we didn't have to have a physical box in our data center run it. So that was important to us. Uh, the other piece was security. Hmm. As you can see, security is one of the biggest boxes yeah. on there. One yeah. of the things I'm going to say, if you're early on in the process of going out and looking for SD-WAN or SD branch uh, vendor, bring your security officer with you. He came with me from the, the day that we started this. They put together the questions for security. I didn't have to go back and re-explain everything to them or have lots of extra meetings. They need to be there. This was totally different for us. We were going from an air gap mm. where guest Wi-Fi and corporate, now we're coming together and, and that had to be explained to security. So have them with you. The other piece is supportability. So one of the things that kept me up, we did this on our, on our own, one of the things that kept me up is, okay, I'm introducing something into Capital One that could take down 700 branches. I, I didn't know. Yes, was, was the network working? It was. Was it where we wanted it to be? No, it really wasn't. But I'm introducing something now that could take down 700 branches. I was a little worried. I, you lose a little sleep over that. But just fast forwarding a little bit quickly on the supportability piece is, 
we partnered with Versa quite a bit, and I'll use the word partner a lot, because when we first started out, the support, it was good. It wasn't where we needed it to be. And the nice thing is, is we worked with, with Versa. How do we make sure that we have the right support model in place? And we worked together to get that. And I'll tell you, um, going from losing sleep over, you talk to any of my engineers, the first thing they'll say is that the support is the one thing that differentiates Versa for us. Thank because you. we get, we have, you're going to have issues, right? but they get the right person on. And if we need the, the lead engineer that developed it, they'll get on the phone and figure it out for us. So. Right, we don't hide our engineers. Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> and we, we know them. <laughs> exactly, you know them by name, which yeah. is good. Uh, and you know, a lot of, a lot of the folks that um, uh, like you that engage with us realize the, the different approach that we've taken to support where 30% you know, of our resources are helping with, with customers type, type stuff, and predominantly because we want them to see firsthand how customers are deploying things and then making it better as we go forward. Well, you did, see, you did see our deployment because you're, you join our calls at 10 o'clock at night to do the deployment, so, <laughs> right. so that's nice. Now, um, th there, is, there is operational learning too on both sides, so I think your, your comment is valid that we had to learn and, and um, you know, both sides had to kind of come up with how do we work better together, so appreciate that partnership. Now, um, you know, there's also, um, you, you, you developed some weighting criteria and some buckets in terms of how we're going to evaluate. Maybe you can talk briefly about um, a rundown of what each category meant and how you, um, you know, evaluated the, the different vendors that you did. Yeah, so, um, so if you go through, you're going to look at it. There's the total, the total cost. So we ran that out over 10 years. Actually, when we, another thing that we were looking at doing here was we had a lot of end-of-life equipment that we had to replace, so there's a, a cost to that as well. So we ran this out over 10 years, and there is a cost savings. Um, the architecture was another one. What really <clears throat> is the architecture and how, do you, how, do you, how are they going to build on it? So I don't like to do this too often in RFP or RFI is look at what the roadmap is, but we really need to look at the, the roadmap. And what we found, um, just really quick on that piece, is we were looking for so, uh, software-defined WAN, SD-WAN. Um, what we really found out is there's a, there's a lot of them, you know, the, the capabilities out there, there's a lot of companies that do SD-WAN well. Um, but what I found out, this was the first time, and I don't even know if it was, uh, you know, a term, but the SD branch that you talk about. Yeah. This is where I found out that I really wanted SD branch. Um, I wanted the next gen firewall there without putting hardware into my branch, more hardware. I really wanted to combine things into a simplified um, branch footprint. So that's kind of where we found that. And then the, the company stability, this is where really our enterprise supplier management and legal team comes in. They define that and it's really at such a high criteria that there are only the very large companies are going to meet some of those criteria. Uh, so that, that's why that's a, a yellow check as well. Um, but overall, we, we as a team, all the folks that were involved in this, decided that Versa really were, was going to the direction that we wanted to go. Um, really defining the branch with software and not hardware, and that's, and that's ultimately what, what uh, got us to where we're at. Well, we know how the story ended, and we appreciate uh, the partnership, and, and um, maybe before we go to the next one, do you want to maybe talk about how, how far along you are? Yeah. Um, and we can go from there. Yeah, so, um, so we have, as of last night, uh, we did, we're on our 75th branch. We've been doing it this year for uh, about five months. We paused for about a month. Uh, we, we had to look at how we architected a couple things. And I'm always really cautious, so I paused for a month because we had to make some changes. And I don't, you know, the business is still, hey, this is new. And, and again, I don't want to be that, that, that person that takes our branches down. Um, but we, we, we paused, so about five months, we have 75 branches done. We do two a night. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we don't do changes Thursday and a Friday or Friday and a Saturday. That's a change freeze for us. Um, and we do two a night. We have, we have dabbled with three a night. So we do have teams that do three a night. Typically our deployment is we have folks that go in, um, just desktop size support people that go in, connect this. They actually redo, uh, put new switches in. They, they clean up our closet. So this isn't just putting in a, a, an appliance. This is a full revamp of our closet. And we do two of them a night. Our WAN engineers are remote and we have one project manager that manages both phone calls. That's impressive, and you're getting bad, better and faster We're getting better every time faster. you've done them. And I've seen that over the last year that I've yeah. been in, that you've gotten a lot faster and cutting it down much, much we, we did our best one about two hours. Um, we, we, we average under three hours a site. That's a full re-architecture of the branch. Yeah, wow. of, of the data closet. That's great, that's awesome. Now, um, you know, we, we, you, you also um, have talked a little bit about the, the, the architecture, but let's talk about, ah, oh good. A picture. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the crowd loves pictures. So uh, of a network diagram. Maybe you can talk about where, where 
where you were and how you've ended in this air gap network yeah. architecture? That would be great. Yeah, I thought I'd jump into this just since we were talking about the re-architecture. But really, if you look on uh, your left, that was our existing, a lot of single points of failure. We basically had our corporate network that went back to our data center over MPLS, and then we had an air gap network that, again, was managing just our guest Wi-Fi, so people coming into our branch using our social media that went out broadband. We had an investment in MPLS and broadband, and we have a lot of investment in hardware that's sitting there being utilized. So where we're really moving towards is um, we have two, and you can see a lot of redundancy in there. We have two switches now. We have uh, two appliances, and um, we have actually two internet. Now, the reason there's two there right now is the business does want to look at, hey, what would it be if we, got, if we didn't have the MPLS? What kind of cost savings we'd have there? Um, we're still looking at that. I'm going to try that out in a couple branches. We haven't moved there yet, but that's what, why you'll see that. There's also dual internet because of what I said, the guests coming in. Uh, it's critical for them to be up and running. N the next thing that we're looking at here is we actually sent some of our access points to uh, Versa, and we want to start to look at utilizing their, um, their appliances to do our URL filtering and any other security that we're doing so that we can actually even combine more into our implementation and remove more hardware out of our branches. Well, we do anything to uh, make you move faster uh, and scale out the deployment, so that's, uh, that's great. Now, um, can you touch upon maybe some of the benefits that you've seen or some of the experiences? I mean, did you expect something to be a nightmare and how did it turn out? Yeah, so what we, what we found is um, we actually, I can give you a, a, a use case. We had, one of the things that you, when you're looking at this, I'm just going to tell you, look at your broadband. Is it big enough? Don't try to run it on three, three meg. We actually have a 0.75 DSL that we were trying to run. We didn't realize at first. Um, that's not going to help you, especially if you're running 1.5 meg on your MPLS. But we did have a branch that we, we started moving all our branches to, to 75 or 100 meg because when we started looking at this, it opened up the conversations with our internet providers to say, why are we paying this much for three meg when 100 meg is very available and out basically the same price? So that's a conversation you want to hand up front and get ahead of that. We had a branch that was 75 meg. Um, the MPLS started going up and down. Um, the appliances failed over to the, the broadband or the SD-WAN, automatically failed it over. We ran on 75 megs, that's our phone, all of our applications for three days on there while, while the carrier was troubleshooting that. Hmm. I called that branch every day, and by the third day, they told me to quit calling, there's nothing wrong, <laughs> stop. And so those are the good conversations that I'm getting yelled at by the business saying, stop calling us, there's nothing wrong. And then it failed back seamlessly when we reintroduced that MPLS circuit back in. Oh, so that's, that's good, that's a great story. Stop calling me. Stop calling me. That's I like nice. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, um, you know, this has been great, Jason. Thank you so much. But I know um, this is not going to end here. Uh, what are you thinking next? Where are you taking this further? Yeah, so I will just jump. I, I, just what's next um, is really we're starting to introduce this into our executives' um, homes. So their home offices, we're, we're starting to replace what's there now with, um, with uh, uh, SD-WAN. We're also looking at any road shows like our CIO does or anything to host those on um, SD-WAN as well. So we're really moving forward, expanding this out. Retail was kind of the, the starting point of it and see how it worked because you have all these branches and it really made sense. But now there's so much more that we're finding that this can do for us. No, and Jason, I just want to say thank you to uh, you and Capital One. You've been a great champion for us. Yeah, you've been uh, a great And partner. Capital One's been a great partner as well. We really appreciate the partnership. Um, if anyone has questions, um, I think we're going to be out of time. I can't see the clock. Um, uh, but if, if there is questions, we can certainly take them after the, the, um, the session here, or we can meet you uh, at our booth, and we'll be there uh, the next two days. Feel free to come by and uh, see what we're doing. But um, uh, once again, appreciate the time this afternoon, and thank you, Jason, for a great session. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you.